on to the next topic, which might at first not really sound like a business process topic, advanced find system jobs and dashboards, but I think it is. These are really important techniques for basically monitoring, troubleshooting, and reporting on processes, and probably the more important, the larger your user environment, your user uh, population is, and the more workflows you have running. The basic thing to know is that running instances of workflow processes, those are system jobs. So you need to get good at working with system jobs and things like advanced find and even writing reports and things like that. First example that I show you here is a advanced find query. Notice it's on opportunities, but it's on opportunities that have system jobs that have uh, succeeded. You can see from the screenshot there. And the system job name is the gated sales process. So this would show you opportunities when the sales process through to completion. And I'll show you how to create these in a second. Another example, notice that in example two, what we're looking at is system jobs, not opportunities, as we saw in example one. That's sort of the conventional approach with a unconventional twist. Here's the unconventional approach if you're not used to doing this. I could simply have a advanced find view or a saved view for system jobs. And this, in this case, system job type equals workflow, status region equals waiting. So these are going to be all the running instances of the gated sales process. And you, if you know advanced find fairly well, you can kind of infer from this screenshot here that system jobs are a child record type of opportunities. What that means is that from this context, system jobs a child, that means opportunity is a parent. So I could use advanced find to reach back up into the opportunity record type and get information from it. And among the things that you can do with that is, for example, create dashboards. So if you're trying to administer an environment that has lots of workflows running for lots of users, you probably want to consider something like this. So you can kind of manage by exception in a sense. Notice that very first one, you can see there's an error code and message fields that the system job entity has that can be pretty useful. In this, in this case, I think every everybody knows just intuitively that negative two billion one hundred forty-seven million two hundred nine thousand four hundred sixty-two is the error code for uh, when somebody doesn't have permissions to do something. So in this case, the workflow is trying to do something. It's probably assigning a record to a user that doesn't have privileges for that record. But if, you, if all you did was looked at that waiting status review, you might think that was okay. But in this case, it's not. It's actually a, an error code. So you can use those error codes to good effect. And let's uh, take a look at this dashboard. The key thing here is, if I go to the workplace here, we'll look at a uh, different dashboard. Last time I looked at the dashboard that showed queue items for the administration teams team. Here the dashboard that I want to look at is the workflow process jobs dashboard. So here we see, I've got this, again, this is a, you tell from here that it's a personal dashboard, so I can modify it right from here. And all I've done here, I'll edit the dashboard so you can see, this dashboard has two components. It's pretty simple, they're both lists. And if I modify this component, I could click edit component or double click it. And I can see that the entity that's exposed on this dashboard component is system jobs, just like a regular record type. And I've got a personal view that I created for round robin lead assignment jobs. And that's really all it does, since this is a list component here. The way I'd create something like that, if I was going to configure this from scratch, I might go to this component here. It's currently unused. I'll increase the width. I would click list, insert list, choose system jobs and then choose something like this, round robin lead assignment, or my gated sales process jobs. And notice that those are both personal views. In this case, that's important to know because system jobs, the, that record type, is one of those not quite so customizable record types. I cannot create custom system views, so I couldn't create any of these type of views here, but I can create personal views. Personal views can be exposed on a dashboard as long as it's a personal dashboard. So the second component here, system jobs, I just use the gated sales process jobs. So that's how you construct one of these dashboards. I won't save those changes. So if I go down here, here's the all of the opportunities. There's apparently currently 21 opportunities to which this gated sales process 
is applied, and it's you know kind of not a bad view actually. You kind of see I've I've got dates on custom fields on the opportunity entity for stage one complete, stage one completed by, stage two complete, stage two completed by, and you can see all my users are pretty well behaved because they don't fill things in out of order or anything. But again, this is a view on the system jobs record type, and if I go into advanced find, it looks like this. So I've just selected system jobs, then I have some query conditions here regarding opportunity, although this isn't really necessary. I'm going to get the same result even if I don't have that. So here's all the system jobs that are running that gated sales process for opportunity records. So that's a little bit about system jobs and dashboards. Now, a couple of related topics, and these are also in the category I refer to as head scratchers. First, the sales processes and the sales pipeline report. Now, if you haven't used the sales pipeline report, it's a great report, but it's also one of the most specific reports out there. And in particular, it's got a very specific dependence on workflow processes. It requires at least one stage sales process workflow, like that gated sales process that we've been looking at. There have to be stages in the workflow, and you have to have conditions in their gating conditions effectively, forcing a process to stay in those stages. So let's take a look at this a little bit closer now. Let's take a look at opportunities. And I'll open something up that's a little bit further along in the sales process. Let's go pick a stage two opportunity. Go to sales process. You can see that stage one was completed on May 29th. It's the 31st. Herb comes along and completes stage two. Save those changes. Then we go look at the workflow. Here's our gated sales process. And just to review, sure enough, it's now past stage two because this condition has been satisfied. And now it's waiting in stage two. So in a sense, this is the, the gating condition. This is this wait conditions is what forces the workflow to stop. And here are the stages. Let's go take a closer look in the designer again at this thing. And then we'll see how this impacts the sales pipeline report. So here's our gated sales process. We'll hide the properties. Come in here. So each of these stages is effectively the same. And the key thing here is, even though the stages themselves are not required, this workflow would function the same just from a business process standpoint if I didn't have these stages in here, which you add by doing this stage. But the sales pipeline report wouldn't work because the sales pipeline report actually needs those stages to be defined in a process that's applied. So let's activate that. Now let's go run the sales pipeline report so you can see what I'm talking about and what this has to do with anything. So we go to reports, sales pipeline. Here's the, just the default sales pipeline report. I run it. It's a good report, but the first time you run this, it's a little underwhelming because it looks like this. Huh? What was what this? What's going on here? No opportunities. The, the reason I think this is a little bit confusing at first for a lot of people, at least it was for me, is that this wording is a little bit cumbersome. Group by sales process. What does that even mean? Notice if I select the gated sales process, remember that's the name of the workflow we just looked at. And if I accept the default sales stage group by, sales stage value I should say in the group by drop down there, now it's going to look a little bit more interesting. So effectively what this is doing, and I've got a different workflow we haven't looked at, a gated process for small deals that has similar characteristics to this shows up there. So I can jump back and forth between those. Notice we've got five opportunities here as compared to like 21 or so opportunities, 22 opportunities that are being that have this gated sales process applied to them. So this isn't a group by, this is really a filter. That's why this is, for me, this was a little confusing at first because it's really not, this should be filter by sales process. It's not a group by, this is a filter, right? So that's why this is a little bit confusing. But once you know at least what does the wording still cumbersome, but at least you understand what this thing does. So once you get that, you know, this is a nice report because I can choose weighted revenue if I want to. This is just built in. So if I want to apply the probability Values to those at 870,000 in stage two is going to go down to 487,000 because it's being multiplied for the most part by 50%, which is what I have at stage. Stage three goes up a little bit. 
probably 75% or something like that. I can drill down. So if I pick one of these opportunities that's big enough to notice, I'll drill down on this Q2 project. For, it's $131,000 project. And I'll go to the sales process and I'll advance it to stage four. Signing off. I did that. Yes, I did. And now when I refresh the report, you'll see the stage three bar go down and the stage four bar goes up. Get it back. Waited. So again, the point is this is very specific. What you'll see is if you have a process applied to some opportunity records that meet those two criteria. It's got stages and it's forcing opportunities to wait in stages. They'll start showing up here. You can select the different processes you have. And the way I've got this done is I've designed my opportunity scenario for this organization so that 100% of my opportunities either fall into the gated process for small deals or the regular gated process, sales process. So I've got some logic in there that hands off the process to, for these small deals to a different workflow if it's less than, say, $25,000. That's all optional. You don't have to do it like that, but I find that a useful way to do it. And once we do that, then we can start doing some other interesting things, too. So now I've chosen the, the gated sales process. So these are my bigger opportunities. If I was using products, I could do that. Um, I could do uh, by sales user. That is the owner of the opportunity record. So it'll take the, it'll distribute that out. So effectively, that becomes the real group by. And then within that, there's a second dairy group by, which is the sales stage. That is the stage that this sales process uses. Do the same thing by sales territory. What sales territory? That is the territory that the users are assigned to. As opposed to customer territory, remember tying back to that territory field we used on the account record type in the very beginning? Choose customer territory. These are the territories that the customer records are assigned to. So if I go to central, let's make it a better example. Go to uh, west and I'll click on stage four here. Drill down on that $75,000 deal. That's a stage four opportunity for affordable equipment. And if I open up the opportunity and drill through there to get to the affordable equipment account record, you can see that affordable, sure enough, is in the West Territory. So uh, so that's the way the, the sales pipeline report works. So again, that's about as specific a dependence as you can get. Something else that's kind of interesting has to do with the sales pipeline chart. You ever wonder how this thing works? You know, it's a nice chart, it's that funnel chart, but it's odd because it, it uses a freeform text field to drive the stages, the sales stages of the pipeline chart, even though there, it's a freeform text field and it's not even exposed on the default opportunity form. So what that's really saying is that if you want to use this default sales pipeline chart, you really have to have what it's designed for workflows to update that. And it, the field that it uses is the milestone phase. Here, let me show you how that works. Far from intuitive, although I'm sure this is documented somewhere in the in the great user manual in the cloud, or wherever it might be. So here we are on open opportunities. If I expand the chart pane, and let's go to the sales pipeline chart. The sales pipeline chart is a pretty good chart. By the way, the height of these segments, this is proportional to the revenue. So it took me a while to kind of realize that, but if I drill down on stage one, so I can click on the component there, the visual component for stage one and filter on it. And let's pick out something that's again, big enough to notice. So let's use that $255,000 opportunity. And I'll push that up to uh, another stage. Let's see if the workflow is running on this thing. Save it. Once the workflow has a chance to run, I'll undo the filter there, refresh the chart, and notice that stage one is it's only 780,000 now as opposed to a million before, and notice that the height of that component is proportionally less than the height of the stage two component. So it's a, it's a perfectly nice chart, but what is it that drives this? Well, it's a field called the milestone phase, and if you look at the standard opportunity form, this is slightly customized, but 
this part of it is not customized, that milestone phase field is nowhere to be seen. If I customize the form, you can be able to see it. It'll be over here on the right hand side. Or sorry, pipeline pipeline phase is what it's called. And notice it's a text field. So you know I suppose if you want to, you could put it on there in a read only format, but it's really just defined behind the scenes there. And a workflow can update that even though it's not on the form. And then what you get to do is you get to use the default sales pipeline chart, which is kind of nice because it's used in lots of different places. Some of the default dashboards use it, things like that. So what I always do is I have a standalone opportunity that I always like to run on the opportunity record type to update the pipeline phase. And this is about as simple as a workflow gets because all it does, well, in this case, let's deactivate it and let's make one little change to it. So if I select the properties there, you see what we're doing here? Is I'm taking the value of that pick list, the sales stage, and I'm putting the text of that into the pipeline phase. So a nice enhancement to this workflow would be to run it automatically, give it a scope of organization, and run it automatically on a record fields change trigger. And that record fields change is going to be the sales stage. Here it is. So when this pick list value changes, then it's going to fire this workflow. I can also run it on demand. And then my pipeline phase field is always going to be in sync. Okay, so now it's active again. That's the sales pipeline chart. Now, just a couple of other things along the same lines. Now that we know how the sales pipeline chart works, one of the things you might want to do is create custom views of opportunities running different sales processes. And then you can see how they're you can see how, how you can visualize those using that standard pipeline chart. So if I go back to opportunities with the pipeline chart selected there in the charting area. Now, whatever view of opportunities I select, provided that it's open opportunities, because this uses estimated revenue here, this is really designed for the pipeline. For example, I can choose the large opportunity pipeline or the small opportunity pipeline and see the same visualization automatically applied to different data sets. What's the difference between this large opportunity pipeline and this small? Well, let's click on Advanced Find to see. You can see what this does. It's open opportunities to which the gated sales process is being applied. Remember, that's the process that we use for large opportunities in this demo environment. And the small opportunity pipeline, Advanced Find View, that filters opportunities on a different sales process. So anyway, these are all kind of illustrations of, of similar concepts of how we can use just kind of standard tools like advanced find and charts and views and things like that to help visualize. And these, these are, again, things that just come up all the time when you're working with processes and trying to visualize them and monitor them and things like that. So different views, same visualization on to hyperlinks and record URLs.